I'm going to talk today about a topic that is going to impact the whole world, Christians and non-Christians. I'm going to talk to you today about what will happen when Christians and children suddenly disappear. What the disappearance of Christians and children really will prove to the whole world. In other words, when all of a sudden people wake up and their babies are gone and their toddlers and little children are gone, along with Christians, regardless of their religion, there is going to be chaos on earth and a lot of people seeking answers. So today we're going to talk about what will happen when Christians and uh, children suddenly disappear. And I tell you, according to the dictionary, disappearance is an instance or a fact of someone or something ceasing to be visible. In other words, to vanish. But in Christianity, we call it rapture. They don't just vanish to thin air, the Lord Jesus uh, promise. He said uh, he will come and get us as you're going to see. And when this rapture happens, it's called being cut up to meet the Lord in the sky. Because according to uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, from the revelation that he was given based on the Lord Jesus' promise himself, uh, he wrote in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, the following. He said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and the trump of God, the meaning the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, meaning Christians, which are alive and remain, shall be cut up. This cut up is what Christians call rapture. We shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the sky, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is good news. Awesome news for anybody who wants hope, who doesn't want to uh, spend eternity burning in hell. You want to be part of this being caught up, but as you're going to find out, there's only one way that you can do it. So this vanishing or being cut up that is going to uh, take place will also, as I stated in the beginning, <coughs> excuse me, will also affect children. So the occurrence of uh, rapture, I say to you today, that a day is coming, and very soon, when suddenly Christians and children that are under the age of accountability, children that are under the age of accountability, I will explain this to you, in, uh, in a little bit, will suddenly disappear all over the world. And But the Christians who are left behind, they are going to know what happened. But non-Christians all over the world will begin to wonder and begin to cry for their children and their loved ones that suddenly disappeared or vanish, gone, for, you know. And many who rejected Christ among the unbelievers or who rejected Christians who were trying to tell them that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to get to God will begin, some of them will begin to blame themselves and begin to seek answers. So you really need to pay attention now because this event called rapture is going to happen very soon. We don't know the day or we don't, and we don't know the hour. So, but uh, a lot of uh, people who, were, who are not Christians, before rapture, will suddenly find themselves questioning their religion or what they have been believing. You know, because only Christianity gives you this type of hope that God can come and take you away from misery and from the uh, wrath or the, the, the evil things that are about to start happening in the world. So this sudden disappearance that we call rapture will prove so many things. Number one, it will prove 
that the Lord Jesus Christ is who he said he is, the Son of God. It will prove also that the Lord Jesus Christ keeps his promise. He keeps his promise to one day to uh, come into the world and to take away from the world, as I just told you, those who believe in him, who put their faith in him, who follow him faithfully. Not just Christians in name only, not just Sunday Sunday Christians, not one person who prayed the, the prayer of salvation 20 years ago and went on to live like hell. But those who continue with him, because in other scriptures he said it. He said, he that endures to the end shall be saved. He said, many will come and, uh, and say, Lord, Lord, have we not preached in your name? And in your name uh, did many uh, wonderful works. And he will say to them, get away from me. I never knew you. You have to have a close personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. You have to be led by the Spirit of God. Because according to scriptures, as many as are led by the uh, Spirit of God, they are the source of God. Not as many as go to church, not as many as uh, give tithes to the church, not as many as follow their pastors or are registered or members of some huge uh, or in what we call mega churches. No, but as many as are led by the Spirit of God. And the Lord said it also, He said, many are called, but few are chosen. Remember the parable of the net? Where the, uh, the, the, the good man cast the net into the sea. And the Bible said it drew all sorts. Good, bad, ugly. And so God himself is the one who sorts the good uh, seed from the bad. He said the good, he would say, come into my kingdom. But the bad, he's going to throw away. But the Lord Jesus, concerning rapture, promised to come and to receive all those who put their trust in him, who lived according to his word, to the best of their ability, being led by his spirit, and did not trust in their own self-righteousness. And he said it in uh, John chapter 14, look at verses 1 to 3. He says, let not your heart be troubled, the Lord Jesus speaking. He said, ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. In other words, I would not lie to you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. The reason why the Lord Jesus Christ did not stay on earth after he rose again was to go first to send us the promise of the Holy Spirit and to prepare a place for all who believe in him to abide in or dwell in in heaven. So all these years there have been uh, a lot of uh, construction when you go to heaven a lot of construction is going on building houses for believers. You know, putting the things that you like in your house God knows what you like is going to decorate your house to I mean better than uh, you can ever dream but he knows your taste you know. And so the Lord is saying I'm going to prepare a place for you and in verse 3 he says and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. That's why I tell you, to be able to get to God, Jesus Christ is the only way. And it's not through him, as some translations have it. It is by him. You have to be in Christ. That's why I, uh, when you, you see the Lord Jesus in heaven, all believers go into him, not through him. And when you go into him, and the Lord Jesus put on his uh, prayer shawl, and he steps into the Holy of Holies, he actually opens up. And everybody in him can deal with God the Father. Just like the Lord, uh, when he said to Moses, he said, where you are, no man can see me and live. He said, there shall no man see me and live. He said, but there is a place beside me, and thou shalt be in the cleft. He did say through the cleft. He said, but thou shalt be in the cleft of the rock, meaning the Lord Jesus. It's a type of what the Lord was going to do, so that he had to put us inside of him. Because by yourself, in your own righteousness, you cannot stand before our God, because he's too holy. His holiness will consume you. So he wants us to be where he is. 
So he's coming again to receive us, and this is what we call rapture. And so he's coming and fulfilling this promise. We prove to the world that Jesus Christ is truly the Son of God. He is uh, who he said he, uh, he is, and he keeps his promise. He is faithful to keep his promise. He said it. He said, I am the way, and I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He said that to my face before I got born again. You know, he just showed up. I said, your spirit is demanding an audience with my father. Hey, but he said, but I am the way and I am the truth and I am the life. And no one comes to the father but by me. He raised his finger and he left abruptly. You know, so nobody is going to, like I always say, nobody is going to wake up one day and suddenly find themselves in heaven and go like, oh! I can't believe they let me in. No, you have to be in Christ. You have to consciously, of your own free will, receive Christ. And you have to desire Christ. And you have to endure to the end. In other words, don't compromise your Christianity and live like the world and then come to church on Sunday and go like, oh, I'm the pastor, or oh, I'm the usher, or oh, I'm the deacon. God doesn't play title. He looks at your heart and he sees what you did and the reasons why you did them. And he knows when you're not fully for him. And the devil also knows who is on his corner. You know? So the only person that is being deceived by living in a world and pretending to be a Christian is the person who is pretending. Because the devil knows you're for him. God knows that you're not really uh, uh, all in with him. So you'll be deceiving yourself. You know? Also, it will prove to the whole world when children and Christians suddenly disappear, it will prove to the whole world that what God said in John 3.16 to verses 19 is true. That Jesus Christ is the only way to Him. Let's read it. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Then he tells you, he that believeth on him is not condemned. In other words, when a Christian comes to you and tells you God loves you, and he wants to recon uh, Jesus wants to reconcile you with his father. He paid on the uh, he died on the cross and paid for your sins. Would you receive the Lord Jesus? The Bible says if you receive him and you believe and put your trust in him, you are not going to be condemned because we are all already under condemnation. Adam sold us into condemnation. He sold us into slavery to sin and the devil. And the Lord said it. That he who, is the, uh, who sins is a servant of sin. So you might be looking at yourself and going like, Oh, I have billions of dollars, I have millions of dollars. And you indulge in all your high desires. And then you do everything God says not to do. Unknown to you is that sin is having dominion over you. Sin is pushing your buttons to do all these things. And sin is your master. You might be deluded in thinking that your money is giving you all the enjoyment that you desire, but the devil is laughing all the way to hell because he knows he just threw you a, 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 a deception that will blind you to the fact that you're on a one-way ticket to hell. So if you believe in the Lord Jesus when the, uh, the good news of the gospel comes to you, the Bible says that you're not condemned. Then he said, but he that believeth not is condemned already. As I said, Adam already sold us into that discondemnation to, to the wrath of God. You know, we can't stand before a holy God, you know. So it takes one who is cleansed by the blood of Jesus to be able to stand in the presence of God. He says, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that, it, that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. So when somebody comes to you next time and tells you about the Lord Jesus, 
really, to be honest with you, it is a matter of life and death. It is a matter of whether you're going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell, depending on your reaction. If you reject them, you're rejecting the only way God has provided for every single human being to come to him. You are shutting the door on your face. I was out this morning and I was witnessing to people and a lot of people gladly were happy to, uh, to uh, have me talk to them about the Lord Jesus. I also saw some people they could care less because they saw trust in the religion that they are currently practicing, thinking that they are serving God. So when rapture happens, these people are going to now re evaluate everything that they believe, re-evaluate everything that they have been practicing, especially if God take, took away their children. Because God doesn't have to be a Buddhist to, to save somebody, for instance, who is Buddhist or any other religion. God doesn't have to, uh, uh, because he's God, all children belong to him. He said, all souls are mine. So any child that's under the age of accountability is going to be taken by God. And so now we come to the question, why take the children, you say? Remember, when the Lord Jesus Christ was here, nobody was born again. Nobody was saved. He alone had the Holy Spirit. So he preached to everyday parents having little children. And children are innocent. Just like Adam and Eve were innocent, in the garden before they were corrupted by sin or before sin corrupted them. While children are innocent, God protects them and he keeps them. Now, when these children learn to hide their sin, we're going to talk now about the age of accountability. When the, the, a stage comes in a child's life, when they learn to, when they learn that something that they were told not to do, they did it, and their conscience tells them that they have done wrong. This is the age of accountability when your conscience comes in and tells you that you have done wrong. For instance, you have a little baby. I give this example always. Uh, you tell the baby, don't touch the cookie jar. And so you go away and now they can actually reach the counter or something to, to reach the, the jar. And then they are able to open the jar and to take a cookie and eat it. So when you walk through the door, remember I'm talking about age of accountability. When you walk through the door, you can, feel, you can see either the, the chocolate covered lips or the cookie crumbles all over the baby's face or the child's face. And then you ask the child, maybe they're six or even seven, did you eat the cookie? They go like, no. But guess what? They didn't wipe their face. Why? Because they are innocent. You know? They didn't wipe their face. They didn't try to cover what they had done because it doesn't occur to them to cover their wrongdoing yet. You know? So, but this same child gets to an age when you tell the baby or the child, don't touch this or don't eat these cookies. They are for something else. And then when you are gone, they go to that same jar and there were 12 cookies in there. The child takes one, eats the cookie, and then rearranges the cookies so that you cannot tell in their mind that they have tampered or they had eaten out of the cookie jar. So what have they learned to do now? They have learned to cover their sin. They knew, their conscience told them, hey, you were told not to eat this. Now they ate it and they are trying to make it look like they did not which is different from the time they ate it and they didn't try to hide the fact that they ate it because it didn't occur to them and it didn't even occur to them that the evidence is all over their face because they're innocent. So when you reach that age when you can begin to hide your sin, then God holds you accountable for your sins. And the, the interesting thing about this is that um, every child is different. Everybody gets to this age according to their own growth or according to their own uh, maturity. Some people might reach it sooner than the others. Some people might reach it much later 
in their uh, maybe close to their teenage years. So it depends on when your conscience begins to speak to you that what you had done is wrong, and then now you can either try to hide your sin like Adam and Eve did, uh, hide themselves, or you can deny that you did it. Then now you have been corrupted by sin, and the God that used to come and uh, play with you and visit you in the nighttime as a baby, sin begins to put a difference or a distance between you and God. And as you grow up, you can't even gravitate to God anymore because you have so distanced yourself from God by piling sins on as you grow. So now, we need to remember that uh, Jesus spoke a lot about children. And I want to give you some scriptures why he, it is necessary for him to take little children all over the world, not just Christian children, remember. Every child that's under the age of accountability, in other words, every child that has not learned to cover up their sin. Number one, Matthew chapter 19, verse 14, Jesus said, Suffer the little children and forbid them not to come to me. For of such is the kingdom of God. Suffer the little children and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven, really. Then in Mark 10, 15, he said, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall not enter into it. So that when you are grown, even to enter the, two, uh, the kingdom of heaven, the Lord is saying you have to humble yourself like a little child. You can't pretend to know it all and come before God. God will leave you alone. But when you humble yourself and tell God, I don't know anything by myself. I can of my own self do nothing. I need your help. Children are helpless without their parents. So you have to learn to depend on the Lord Jesus for everything. And let, let it be that your prayer daily is, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. You know? So there you're walking with him as his child. As his child, a child of God that is led by the Spirit of God. And in Matthew chapter 18, verse 10, he said, Take heed that ye despite, that ye despise not one of these little ones. Talking about children. For I say unto you that in heaven... Dear angels, meaning their spirits, do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Have you ever seen a baby in a crib? They are playing, they are smiling and uh, carrying on. Sometimes God sends angels to, pray, uh, to play with them. And other times he himself comes down and he plays with them. He smiles at them. They relate to him because they are innocent. There's no distance between them and God. Even though they have the original Adamic sin, but they haven't learned to walk in it yet. You know? So, and then also, in Matthew chapter 18, verse, uh, verse 14, the Lord said, Even so, it is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones, many children, should perish. So, it's not the will of God that any child should perish. Because they are innocent. You know? So, but right now, in the world, you have people who are practicing whatever religion or anything that they desire. So, you have people in uh, Islamic religion, Hinduism, Buddhism, Shintoism, Communism, Atheism, Paganism, and Satanism, and New Age, and occultic practices of all sorts. And then you have those who are, who, who, who are just in a general state of unbelief, just hidden, or who are free thinkers. And they are going about every day doing whatever they like, uh, their little hearts desire. But when rapture happens, everybody will have to take stock. And I tell you how it's going to go by God's grace. A lot of Christians will, uh, that were not walking right with the Lord, they, will, they are going to change. And become more serious and more faithful in their work with the Lord. Then those people 
depending on who they are, doesn't matter what religion they have been in, those who are not bound by religion will seek to know the truth. They will seek to know, to have answers to what happened. But those who are bound by religion, who are faithful to religion, that they, they, they were born into this religion and that religion, they will practice it till they die, and the devil is going to blind their eyes. And those who don't want to have anything to do with religion, the devil will blind their eyes. Those who think they know everything, the devil will blind their eyes. Those who think that the, uh, God doesn't exist, God will blind their eyes. And then you have uh, expect this also, expect this also to happen. Most or all of the world religions or world governments, rather, they are going to try to blame or explain the disappearance of uh, Christians and children on aliens. Or they are going to try to give you an ungodly explanation why all of a sudden children and Christians suddenly disappeared off of the face of the earth. Believe me, when the Lord comes for his church, after seven years, he's going to come back with all of us who were caught up to be with him and everybody on earth, they are going to see us riding behind him on the white horse. And those who jeered at you, those who laughed at you when you became a Christian, those who did not believe, they are going to see you in your new state. But I'm telling you, when all of a sudden Christians and children disappear, let these scriptures that I'm going to uh, give you guide you instead of any other explanation as to what happened. Because the Bible foretold all these things way, way, thousands of years. Jesus lived over 2,000 years ago. So it's not like something that modern man made up. It's not something that we cooked up. It's what he promised. And he promised when he, they killed him, he was going to rise again on the third day. He did. And now he said he's coming to take out of the world his own, and he will. And he's going to take our children, and he will. Because all children, regardless, again, of any religion that they are uh, into right now, as long as they are within the age where they are innocent, he's going to take them all because all souls are his. So let your hope or your explanation come from John 14. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3, where the Lord promised that he was going away and he would come back again. And after he has prepared a place for us, he's going to come back and receive us. So that would be your explanation as to what happened or why Christians and children suddenly disappeared all over the world. And also, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17 where we are told that the Lord himself will descend with a shout and the voice of an archangel and the dead in Christ will rise first. We, which are alive, many Christians and remain, will be cut up, meaning raptured up, to be with him. And so shall we ever be with the Lord because it is the Lord's desire that where he is, we should be there also. So he's going to come back and he's going to take his church. Now, if you have heard all this, this is good news, really, for any, uh, any person who believes in the Lord Jesus. If you look at the world, it doesn't look like it's going in a, in, a, in a good direction. But the Lord told us that these things were going to happen. He said, uh, you will hear uh, of wars and rumors of war, and then nations will rise against nations, and then earthquakes and plagues. He said, but those are beginnings of uh, sorrows. He said, but the end will come when the gospel has been preached to every nation. Can you tell me a nation today that you can say have not heard the gospel? There is no nation, to my understanding, where the gospel has not been preached. And that is what the Lord Jesus says brings the end. So that's why we're telling you that the end is upon us because the Bible, the gospel has been preached. What people did with it, what they heard, they are accountable for. 
whether they received it or rejected it, it's on them. But the gospel has been preached, and that brings the end. And the internet reaches just about everywhere today, and people are preaching the gospel. And now, if you're listening to this, and you go like, okay, it's about time for me to get uh, ready. I've been hearing uh, Christians talk about uh, Jesus, and I want to uh, belong to him. I want to be rapture ready. I love the Lord. It's very simple. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you were buried. And on the third day, God raised you up from the dead. Come into my heart. I repent of all my sins. Forgive me, Lord, of all my sins. And give me eternal life. And baptize me with your Holy Spirit. To keep me and teach me the Bible. And help me to be faithful. Or to walk faithfully with you. If you would do this. The Lord Jesus will hear you and he will save you. And you will immediately be a, a child of God. And now, if you are already a believer but you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's also very simple to say, Lord Jesus, I believe you already. But I, I need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Because your word said that as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So I want to be led by your spirit. I need your spirit so that your spirit can lead me. And he will save you. Otherwise, you will go through life making decisions or, uh, by yourself, thinking that you are making wise decisions, only to stand before the Lord. And he, he says to you, get away from me. I never knew you. And at that time, it's too late. Anybody that finds themselves in hell, it's too late. This is where you make a decision whether you are going to heaven or you are going to hell. It's why I told you nobody's going to suddenly find themselves in heaven without choosing the Lord Jesus. It doesn't happen. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only way you can get to God the Father. Amen.